PNG LNG landowners panic. Fintrafen police struggling. This is a plan of police boat long patrol. And PNG surfing to play host to world surfing event. This is National MTV News with Mary Bartolo. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Sunday's news. The new year has brought panic to the landowners in the PNG LNG project impacted areas. Landowners in impacted areas fear losing their shares in the project. This comes after the state announced a six-month period for the landowners to pay for the equity shares or their shares before fitted in the PNG LNG project. Some landowner groups in the LNG project impacted areas are now in a state of panic. Some even don't know where they will secure a financier to partner with to pay up equity sales for the ExxonMobil LNG project in the Kumul Petroleum Company. On the eve of New Year, Kumul Petroleum Holdings Limited announced that project area landowners in Ella, Southern Islands, Gulf, Western and Central Provinces and the five provincial governments have only six months to pay their equity. The six-month period from 1st January to 30th June 2016 is too short for many to raise enough money. Many have raised concerns that the umbrella benefit sharing agreement they signed in Kokopo in 2009 is not to the best interest of all landowner groups. While the landowner identification program is still on, respective groups have not received any royalty payment since the first shipment in 2014. Concerns were raised on where they will raise money to pay equity sales in six months when royalties look unpromising. We never know the price. Who did the pricing? It wasn't from National Economic Physical Commission. It wasn't the pricing from our country. I don't know who did the pricing and uh, at, what, at what cost we're going to buy. And uh, it's all fluid. It's all fluid. Yeah. And yet, until today, we are still confused. Quinten Alomp, National MTV News. Liquefied natural gas project landowners are striving for unity in order to successfully buy out the 4.22% of shares in the PNG LNG project. In a first ever meeting of landowner representatives since the 2009 UBS agreement, they were told that acquiring these shares is their last chance to meaningfully benefit from the PNG LNG project. Landowners. Through a show of hands, they indicated that at least all landowning groups were represented in this meeting. The meeting was in response to an advertorial in last Thursday's papers. According to the Umbrella Benefit Sharing Agreement of 2009, the landowners have until the 30th of June this year to come up with 3.4 billion kina to buy out the shares. From this meeting, one thing is clear. They all do not have the money and they agree six months is not a lot of time to raise over 3 billion kina. John Kekeno, former member of parliament and PDL1 landowner, sponsored this meeting and is providing one option for the landowners, securing a loan outside of the country as a group. Let us go out and look for, or look out, and go out to the money market, me play yet. Sambla to me play look so when I stop. Sambla to me play got to come, skelim, skelim, go play long and go long and then. Securing a loan outside of the country to finance the share purchase is not a new concept. Other landowners say they have dealt with this idea before. I got some finances from uh, U.S. Uh, resource capital. I brought them to uh, on uh, technical, legal, and financial advice on the funding of the e equity. At the end of this meeting. It was agreed that those who wish to pursue this discussion with the financier that John Kekeno and his team is in touch with, another meeting will be organized for them to meet with the financier next week, who will then go into more details on the terms and conditions of the loan. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Bougainville's once known notorious district, Buin, has now become safer with significant changes experienced in recent times. Locals have become law-abiding citizens working closely with police to restore law and order. Law and order has improved as more awareness is being conducted by police 
under the leadership of Senior Sergeant John Popui. This was visible on Christmas and New Year, where 10 truck drivers were arrested for minor traffic offences. The offenders breaching the laws will appear at the courthouse. Commander Popui wants to see Buin transform in terms of law and order. Finchafen police have spoken out about using the condemned Gagidu police station. The poor state of the police station is only one of their problems. Finchafen has seen rife homebrew production and consumption. Marijuana is also cultivated and sold, while sea piracy has increased. Police say they need more manpower, vehicles and boats to curb the problems. Gagiru Station is the main settlement of Finchafen. The station has one police building that has been condemned. Police are still using the building. The Gagidu police station is crumbling away. It has become an eyesore within an historical rural station. See crime and Parisian. Parisian. I've been experiencing that long. Between Pinchafen and Leem, popular time, Parisian. See, see Parisian. So we need the house and police, and we plan to get police both long, patrolling. The police building is a glimpse into the problems facing the Finchhafen police. Increased sea piracy. The police doesn't have a boat to monitor the seas. Finchhafen has a homebrew consumption and production problem. Last year, police found plots with marijuana grown for sale. Amidst these problems, the police don't have manpower and vehicles. Other rural places in Morobe have similar problems and has received high-level government attention from the police minister, Robert Atiafa. Well, uh, good news. Good news now, uh, government is working through the ministry. We uh, play start law working on training. So we play passing out uh, close to 2,000 police trainees already. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lay. You're watching National MTV News. Border crosses between Bougainville and the Solomon Islands warned against causing trouble and the year of the monkey. That's up next in the news. Don't go away. Welcome back to the news. Immigration laws on border crossings between the autonomous region of Bougainville and the Solomon Islands must be tightened to protect citizens. Police in Buin, autonomous region of Bougainville, have reported several incidents along the border involving youth from South Bougainville. South Bougainville Police Commander, Senior Sergeant John Popui, has warned youth not to cause a nuisance because those found will be dealt with under foreign laws. Solomon Islands Police Headquarters in Honiara are liaising with the Bougainville Police Service to address these issues. Turning overseas and in commemoration of the Year of the Monkey, a South Korean zoo in Yongin celebrated early last week with goodie bags for baby orangutans and monkeys. At Everland, an amusement park an hour outside of Seoul, squirrel monkeys were seen playing with lucky bags which carried food for them. The year of the monkey is coming, so we prepared this event for visitors to wish them all good luck. Monkeys are eating food from lucky bags, and it means this will bring good fortune to visitors. Baby orangutans were also seen cradled by zookeepers, who were wearing Korean traditional clothes and fed by visitors. On the outside of the cage, Japanese maquek was seen playing with lucky food baskets. Next year is the year of monkey. It was really good experience for my daughter to feed monkeys. I feel something nice is going to happen next year. According to the lunar calendar, February 8, 2016 will mark the start of the year of the monkey. I think I'll feel lucky next year because others can see the monkeys, the children are happy to see the monkeys, they think they're cute, and their parents, they also feel happy because they get to see their children enjoy the zoo and the monkeys. Judah Memafu, MTV World News. Relatives of victims who perished in last year's Air Asia crash have made claims after meeting with representatives from the company that the airline was responsible for the tragedy. The closed door meeting was held on the same day that Air Asia flight QZ8501 went down into the Java Sea a year ago with 162 people on board. 
Little details emerged from the meeting in the heavily guarded police headquarters in Surabaya, where the fatal flight took off before crashing on its way to Singapore. Chief Executive Officer of Air Asia Indonesia said the meeting was meant to commemorate the diseased. So today we are not talking about that matter. We are talking about the sorrows in our condolences and concern for the tragedy. Widyat Moko said the company is committed to increasing safety measures to the highest level as per recommendations by the crash investigators. From our part, we are committed uh, to do all the safety actions we put. There are 52 phase safety actions. We are committed to do it and to improve uh, our standard of safety to the highest uh, in the industry. That's our commitment. Early this month, Indonesian investigators led by the country's National Transportation Safety Committee concluded that problems relating to a faulty rudder system and crew response were among a string of factors that contributed to the crash. A family member of one of the victims said he felt cheated as he believes Air Asia had failed to provide the real reason behind the crash. We, the victim's family, feel cheated by Air Asia's side indirectly. As first, they said that the plane crashed because of the weather and we accept it. We cannot blame the situation or God right. After the investigation report from the KNKT declared that the problem was because of faulty system and human error. So Air Asia is responsible. Therefore, the families are very irritated, angry and feel cheated. Tana Putra lost six family members, including 84-year-old the Hang Ki, in the crash. Investigators ruled out bad weather as a reason of crash in the report. We demand that Air Asia improve their flight servicing system, urge the Indonesian government to replace the aviation law to become better, and thirdly, we demand Air Asia to make their stance clear. What are they going to do after the announcement from KNKT other than the promised compensation? We are not talking about how much we'll get, but we feel that Air Asia has not fought for the rights and represented the victims properly. The Airbus A320 lost contact with the Jakarta Air Traffic Control Tower in the early hours of December 27th with no distress call made. It was supposed to land in Singapore at 8.30 a.m. Lorraine Gabina, MTV World News. You're watching National MTV News. Trukai Sports is up next and we have the latest on the World Surfing event to be staged right here in PNG. Stay tuned for that and more when we come back. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Papua New Guinea is one step closer to hosting the inaugural Surfing Association of PNG World Surfing Tour Championship this month. It is a big step for Surfing PNG, and Surfing Association PNG President Andrew Abel says an opportunity for PNG to host such an event can help promote and develop surfing and surf tourism in the country. Surfing is a sport yet to gain popularity in Papua New Guinea. With breathtaking shorelines throughout the country and swells, it is just a matter of time before more people jump on the surfing craze. Surfing Association PNG have been invited to meet with World Surfing League executives in Australia to discuss planning on staging the inaugural Surfing Association PNG World Surf League Tour in Medang Province. The PNG Surfing Association has come a long way over the last 29 years and to have the opportunity to have the Surf Tour Championship on our shores is massive for the sport in PNG, according to President Andrew Abel. The tour is expecting about 60 athletes to take part, as well as 20 world surfing staff, including local and international media. The tour is also an opportunity to develop the sport of surfing as well as create an avenue for surf tourism throughout the country. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. Carl Okuk presented prizes today at the Five Mile Park in Port Mosby to outstanding touch rugby teams in the area. 
He came up with the idea to stop youth from misbehaving during the festive season by starting a touch rugby competition for the men and a volleyball competition for the women. A former defender with Wigan and Ivory Coast, Steve Gorey, was found dead in the River Rhine after being reported missing in December. The 34-year-old was unaccounted for since attending a Christmas party for his club, TSV Steinbach, and he was set to visit his family in Paris, but never arrived. Guri was born in Ivory Coast, but taken to France as a child and began his soccer career there. He joined Wigan between 10, 2010 and 2012 and also played for clubs across Europe. He, was la he last played for TSV Steinbach in Germany's fourth tier competition and was reported missing after the club's Christmas party on December the 16th. To tennis now and world number three tennis player Roger Federer is in Brisbane ahead of his Brisbane international title defence. Top seed Federer looked relaxed and shook hands with fans, telling local media he, was for, he has fond memories of his victory last year. Before getting to business on the court, Federer enjoyed a boat trip along the South Bank riverfront in Brisbane. The 17-time Grand Slam event winner was met by representatives of the indigenous Mirabuka tribe who gave him a traditional welcome to the country. The 34-year-old Swiss veteran, whose last major win came at Wimbledon in 2012, says the wait for an 18th slam title is stretching out, but he's not overly concerned. I feel like if I keep, keep pushing forward, it might, might happen, and if not, um, it's also okay, you know, I have no problems with that. Federer enjoys a bye in round one before a scheduled meeting with number three seeded Croatian Marin Silic. The 2014 US Open champion in the semi-finals should both players win through. Elsewhere, Australian star Nick Kyrgios warmed up for the Hopman Cup with some local children on Cotslow Beach in Perth on Saturday, with the volatile 20-year-old telling the media he doesn't intend to change his approach anytime soon. You know, I feel as if you know my game and, and the way I act on court isn't going to change too much. You know, I've always been an emotional guy. Um, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Controversy followed Kyrgios in 2015 because of his on-court behavior, highlighted by his widely condemned battle of words with Swiss Stan Wawinka. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. And there in Strukai Sports for today. Up next, a look at the latest installment for a generation of moviegoers from a galaxy far, far away. Stay tuned. Strukai Sports. Strukai Sports. Well... Star Wars, The Force Awakens, the latest in George Lucas story of the eternal battle between good and evil, is starting the new year pretty much the same way it ended the old one, by breaking records. The latest installment of the Star Wars franchise is now the top earning movie of 2015, jumping past Jurassic World. Walt Disney Studios says The Force Awakens has raked in almost $680 million worldwide. It's now second to Avatar as the highest grossing film ever in the US, a record that could fall by Monday. Before we go, recapping our main stories again. PNG LNG project landowners panic to raise landowner equity or lose their project stake. Finchaf and police struggling with homebrew, marijuana and sea piracy and Madang to play host to World Surfing Event. And that's the news, sports and, news and sports for Sunday, January the 3rd, 2016. Stay tuned for Talk Pixar coming up next. On behalf of the entire MTV National News team, I'm Mary Botulo. You have a productive first working week of 2016. Good night.